The opening scene of Scream has always been iconic. In a lot of ways, it's been the most talked about in all of the films. I mean, dating back to the original with Drew Barrymore, it's always been the kills that sort of set the tone for the film going forward. That opening scene is what draws us in as an audience and gets us engaged and excited for the film going forward. Now, I recently did a video diving into various ideas and theories on Scream 5 and its opening scene kill, as well as the realistic possibility that it won't have an opening scene kill at all, which makes a lot of sense. So I'll link the video down in the description below so you can check it out after this one, because this video is going to kind of piggyback off of that, but regarding Sydney as a character for the opening scene. But before we get started, be sure to like the video because it helps me out a lot. It lets me know that you enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. And if you're not, subscribe to the channel, follow by the bell notification so you never miss an upload. And let's get into it. So if you're a fan of Scream, you're going to go into Scream 5 with the assumption of whichever character you see on the screen in the opening has to be the opening scene kill. I mean, that's how it's been historically in the Scream franchise. You know, dating back to Drew Barrymore, as I mentioned earlier, to Jada and Omar, to Cotton Weary as an iconic character in the Scream franchise. We saw them in the opening scene. We knew that they were going to meet their end. Scream 4 kind of went in a little different direction, but it ultimately had an opening scene kill, which we, again, saw the characters we knew. These were the ones that were going to meet their end. Now, in that video that I have linked down in the description, I talked about how they need to have something impactful, that they need to change directions in some ways, because that's always been how Scream has been historically. You know, they it's always had us believing one thing to, to completely switch it on its head and go in another direction. And these filmmakers seem to want to do that in a lot of ways. And one way that I really think would sort of switch things up and have us all like in our feelings for a moment would be to have Sydney as the opening scene character. Because you see Sydney, let's say at a computer or something, and immediately you're just like, no way. Like, because think about it. You have all these other films that show whoever is on that screen in the first 10 minutes or so, or that opening, as soon as the film starts, that's the person that meets their end. So imagine seeing Sydney open, opening the film and we immediately as an audience are like, no, like this is it. Sydney is going to die. Like it would just completely have everybody in their feelings like thrown back, like no way they're about to kill Sydney. And maybe have her as, as, a, as being attacked, you know, maybe Ghostface breaks in, they have a scuffle or something and she gets away or maybe leave it on sort of a cliffhanger for the moment. You know, we think Ghostface got her, but it really did it. And then you fast forward through the film and at some point Sydney comes back and she explains what happened and she survived, whatever. Because again, you need something impactful. You need something that will, will set the tone and draw us in as an audience for the rest of the film. Having Sydney as the opening scene really does that. And don't kill her because then then it just becomes like every other film. And I think it wouldn't really do Sydney justice as a character. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know my opinion on the OG3 dying. I don't need to go too far into it, but I think it's inevitable one way or another. Um, if you want my opinion, go look at the 20 videos I have about it. But having Sydney as that 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 draw for us as an audience that to pull out those emotions and those those thoughts of like this is how Sydney's going to go really again sets the tone it sort of takes it back to the beginning roots because that's how people felt when they saw Drew Barrymore they saw her and they were like this is the main character this is the person that's going to lead us on the charge through the rest of the film, and then boom, she meets her end. Well, in this film, if you have it Sydney, she's the one that's led the charge the rest of the way, so we immediately think there's no way they're going to kill her. And 
obviously, again, don't kill her in the opening scene. Let her live, and if you're going to kill her, kill her later on in the film. But it just it, it just adds that shock value that made the original Scream trilogy so successful. It, it, it takes us back to Cotton Weary. You know, a staple character that has been around in the previous two films that has been talked about that you know that you're just like, there's no way they're about to kill Cotton, and yet he meets his end. Do the same thing with Sydney again without the end. I just think it'd be a really great way to start this film and and be different yet still impactful. You know, have that that excitement and the, those those draw of just anger and uh, people upset and just imagine being in the theater and seeing that and everyone's just like you know up in arms imagine people walking out of the theater because they think Sydney's gonna die and they're like I don't want this and they leave to find out later that she didn't die like you know now now people gotta go see it again like it just it would really be a fresh idea that would add that same value of the previous Scream films it's, it's not too out of left field that, like, Scream 4 where it fell flat. Because that was the biggest problem with Scream 4. There was no significance. There was, it, it just, it fell flat and was the, the, what people complained about the most when the film was released. So you don't, you don't want, you need to have something significant. As I said in the video link down in the description, you either got to have somebody that is impactful be the opening scene kill or do something completely different that adds a different layer of impact. And after I made that video, I really started thinking like, well, what would what could they do that would that would have that same impact without being the same repetitiveness as the other films? And then the whole Sydney as the opening scene made a lot of sense, you know, just to see her you just you get that that same impact from the previous films but in a in a completely fresh and different way but as always this is a discussion and i want to hear from you like what would your feeling be if you went to the film and you saw that you saw sydney as the opening scene kill and you find out luckily she wasn't the one that was killed but just to see her in the opening like what would that do to your to your emotions would you be like yes finally She's dead, or would you look at it as like, like how could they kill her, especially this early? And again, like I don't want her to be the opening scene kill. I just want to make that clear for those that, you know, get the comments that are like, how could you say that she should be the opening scene? That's not what I'm saying. I don't want her to be the kill. I want her to just be the opening scene, but survive that, or like I said, leave it on a cliffhanger to make us think she's dead, but she's really not, and comes back later on in the film. That'd be really cool, really fresh again. So join the discussion down in the comments. If you haven't yet, be sure to like this video. It helps me out a lot. It lets me know that you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel. Follow by the bell notification so you never miss an upload. See you all in the next one.